President Obama kicked off his midterm campaign efforts with a stop in Illinois on Friday and a remarkable speech. He spoke to students about the importance of voting in November and in a first criticized President Trump by name and at length. Nancy Cordes was there. They're undermining our alliances, cozying up to Russia. What happened to the Republican Party? The 44th Although president re-entered the political president fray president in dramatic fashion, Democrat accusing Congress. his successor of stoking racial division. We're supposed to stand up to discrimination. And we're sure as heck supposed to stand up clearly and unequivocally to Nazi sympathizers. How hard can that be, saying that Nazis are bad? With control of Congress at stake, President Obama argued the GOP has lost its way. It did not start with Donald Trump. He is a symptom, not the cause. He's just capitalizing on resentments that politicians have been fanning for years. It was a striking turnaround for a man who initially vowed to help President Trump. And who, in the mold of past presidents, has largely stayed silent, even as his successor slammed him. I inherited a mess. Obama didn't do anything. Today, Mr. Obama sought to settle some of those scores. Let's just remember uh, when this recovery started. Even bringing up that new op-ed by an anonymous top Trump official. They're not doing us a service by actively promoting 90% of the crazy stuff that's coming out of this White House and then saying, don't worry, we're preventing the other 10%. The current president pretended not to notice. I watched it, but I fell asleep. <laughs> I found he's very good. Very good for sleeping. <laughs> I think he was trying to take some credit. He was trying to take credit for this incredible thing that's happening to our country. And Nancy Cordes joins us now from the University of Illinois. Uh, okay, Nancy, the president, uh, President Obama, started with this pretty lengthy preamble about uh, the tradition of presidents not criticizing other presidents. He, uh, he traced that all the way back to George Washington. And then he said, but I'm going to, uh, for the next just about an hour, criticize the, the sitting president. Uh, do we know uh, why he did that now? Well, I talked to his aides about that afterwards, Brooke, and, and they said that uh, he simply felt that we are not living in normal times and the time had come for him to stand up and say something publicly. Uh, that's something that, uh, frankly, a lot of Democrats have been hoping that he would do for a while because he is still their most effective messenger, at least uh, he's regarded that way by many of his uh, Democratic colleagues. Uh, and so he did, as you point out, go through this. Uh, you know, lengthy preamble about the fact that, you know, he has tried to stay on the sidelines. And uh, there is this tradition that, uh, that pre former presidents try to stay out of the political fray and let the new occupant of the White House do their job. Uh, but clearly he has come under attack time and time again from the current occupant of the Oval Office. And President Trump has not been shy about saying that uh, President Obama left him a mess uh, and, and accusing him of a political malpractice on every issue, ranging from health care to immigration to foreign policy. And it was clear that President Obama, in addition to the larger message that he wanted to deliver about young people getting out and voting in these midterm elections, he also wanted to settle a few scores. Yeah, and one uh, score he tried to settle was about who should get credit for uh, the good job market we enjoy today. Uh, President Obama uh, had this to say. Let's take a listen. And by the time I left office, household income was near its all-time high, and the uninsured rate had hit an all-time low, and wages were rising, and poverty rates were falling. Uh, I mention all this just so when you hear how great the economy is doing right now, <laughs> let's just remember uh, when this recovery started. Uh, it was a mix of defending his legacy and campaigning uh, for this midterm. Who do we think that the audience ultimately was for this speech? Sure, you know, he's trying to take away the Republicans' number one campaign issue. You are going to hear every candidate out there this fall 
touting the economy, talking about uh, the low unemployment rate, talking about uh, the recovery. And so he wanted to get out there and say, wait a minute, uh, this recovery started when I was president. Don't forget it. It's continuing. But I'm the reason that we bounced back so quickly from recession. Uh, but you ask, who is this message meant for? Primarily, it is meant for Democratic voters. Uh, he and most Democrats know that they have a very good shot at taking back the House. But their voters can't be complacent. They've got to get to the polls, particularly young voters. And they really seem to be uh, the ones who are squarely in his sights uh, in this speech. He was speaking not just to the students who were in the room here at the University of Illinois, but young people across the country. And he laid out the statistics for them. In the last midterm election in 2014, only one out of five young voters went to the polls. And he said, you are the ones who want change. You are the ones who say that this president is out of step with your values. Well, you're the ones who have a chance to change all of it by putting a check on him, by reelecting Democrats to the House and to the Senate, but only if you get out there and vote. Was this a one-off, or do we expect to see him more uh, between now and November? Oh, this was just the first stop. He's already got uh, campaign visits planned to California on Saturday with House Democratic candidates. He's going to Ohio. He's going to Pennsylvania. He'll be coming back here to Illinois. So his aides say that he is going to have a very packed midterm election schedule. Uh, and that is music to a lot of Democrats' ears, uh, especially at a time when it's kind of unclear who the current leader of the Democratic Party is. He still is someone who is looked at as the pure leader because it's just not clear who's going to inherit that mantle and so he'll be out there barnstorming and we're told that he'll probably be issuing uh, another list of candidate endorsements as well he's already endorsed about 81 people for uh, for Congress and we're told to expect more of that soon and the rare uh, Democrat with the national profile who has proven he can win over uh, moderate voters in the US uh, Nancy Cordes thanks so much uh, with the president you're welcome